Quick confession from your friendly neighborhood obesity doc. When people change the way they eat, sometimes their hair throws a little tantrum. Nobody signs up for ribeyes and better blood sugar expecting extra hairs in the shower drain, but it happens. Today I'm going to explain why, what's happening mechanistically, and how to ride it out without abandoning the plan that could transform your metabolic health. Before we start, drop a heart in the comments and tell me your preferred eating pattern. My carnivore crew, Keto Nation, low-carb legends, and yes, even if you're plant-based and carnivore curious. But here's the big idea. Hair is a luxury to your body, not the engine. When your body senses stress, like major dietary changes, illness, surgery, or rapid weight loss, it reallocates resources to the essentials, like your brain, heart, immune system. Hair follicles get the memo. We're on a temporary budget. Many shift from growth mode into rest. That temporary shift has a name, telogen effluvium. Mechanistically, most of your scalp hairs are in the anogen growth phase. A small percentage are in the catagen transition and telogen rest phase. A significant stress nudges more follicles into telogen at the same time. You won't notice immediately. There's a delay of 6 to 12 weeks, which is why people say, I changed my diet two months ago and suddenly the drain looks like a small woodland creature. The timeline actually fits the biology. So why can low-carb keto or carnivore be a stressor? First, fuel switching. You're moving from a sugar dominant to a fat dominant metabolism. You're lowering insulin and you're shifting fluid and electrolytes. Second, early appetite changes can accidentally produce a steep calorie deficit. Third, weight loss itself, especially fast, signals famine vibes, even when you feel satisfied. Fourth, micronutrient patterns change. Some people undereat total protein or skimp on minerals such as zinc. None of that means the diet is bad. It means your biology wants a smooth landing, not a crash. A quick thyroid note. Some folks see a small drop in T3 during carb restriction, more a conservation signal than true hypothyroidism. But if you already have a thyroid issue or you go too low in calories, hair can suffer. Thyroid hormones manage the backstage of hair growth. When they whisper, follicles nap. Now for the part you came for, how to anticipate and adapt so you don't quit at the first sign of shedding. Number one, eat enough protein. Hair is made of the protein keratin, and follicles are busy little factories. As a ballpark, aim for roughly 0.7 to 1 grams of protein per pound of ideal body weight, or about 1 gram per pound of gold lean mass. On carnivore or low carb, that's ruminant meats, eggs if tolerated, and seafood. You don't have to drown everything in fat, but don't fear it, especially early while you're becoming fat adapted. Number two. Don't free fall calories. Sustainable fat loss is a gentle slope, not a cliff. If you're dropping weight very quickly, increase calories slightly and stabilize for a few weeks. Think, keep the lights on at the follicle factory. Number three, micronutrient audit. Hair follicles love things like iron, so check ferritin, zinc, selenium, B vitamins, and vitamin D. In my clinic, I often order a CBC, ferritin, iron, TIBC, zinc, vitamin D, B12, folate, and a complete thyroid panel including TSH, free T4, free T3, thyroid antibodies, and reverse T3. On meat-forward diets, B12 and iron are usually solid, but history matters, especially in menstruating women or someone with prior low ferritin. Shellfish help zinc. Seafood provides selenium. Small amounts of liver can fill gaps if you tolerate it. Number four, electrolytes and sleep. Cutting carbs increases sodium and water loss from the kidneys. If you feel draggy, crampy, or wired but tired, that's the signal. Salt your food to taste. Consider a simple electrolyte mix and guard sleep like medicine. I use my nest and rope framework with patients. Nutrition, exercise, less stress, more sleep, protecting our thoughts and recovering from trauma, having healthy relationships, avoiding organisms and pollutants that are harmful, and of course, protecting our emotions and making sure our life experiences serve us. Because hair shedding sits at the crossroads of all of these factors. Number five, be kind to your scalp. Avoid tight styles, harsh coloring, and high heat during adaptation. Think scalp spa, not scalp boot camp. 
So what should you expect if this is telogen effugium from dietary change? Shedding typically starts weeks 6 through 12 after the trigger, can peak around months 3 to 4, and gradually settle over the next 3 to 6 months. Then comes regrowth, those cute baby hairs that love to stand straight up during Zoom calls. If you steady the ship, adequate protein, sane calories, micronutrients, sleep, most people see the tide turn. So when should you worry? Patchy, coin-shaped bald spots suggest alopecia areata. That's autoimmune, not telogen effluvium. If shedding continues beyond 6 to 9 months, if the scalp is inflamed, or if you notice fatigue, cold intolerance, brittle nails, heavy periods, or other systemic symptoms, get checked. Medications matter, retinols, some antidepressants, and rapid weight loss drugs can contribute. Post-viral sheds like after COVID are common, but androgen-driven hair loss in male and female pattern looks different, thinning at the crown or a widening part line. Sometimes people have both pattern loss and a telogen shed. We can tell them apart and treat accordingly. Let's bust a myth. Carnivore causes hair loss. Carnivore causes a strong change signal. Pair that signal with too few calories, micronutrient gaps, a sleep depth, and life stress, and follicles say, be right back. The same pattern done well often lowers insulin, reduces chronic inflammation, improves nutrient density, and steadies hormones. Over time, better metabolic health supports a better hair environment, improved microcirculation, calmer immune activity, more predictable hormone signaling. I've seen PCOS patients on lower insulin lifestyles improve both shedding and unwanted hair growth because the androgen insulin axis finally quiets down. Food is information. Send a consistent, supportive message. What about supplements? Always food first, but targeted support can help if tests show deficiencies. If ferritin is low, correct iron under medical guidance. If zinc is low, replete it. Remember that excessive zinc can lower copper, so balance matters. Collagen provides glycine and proline, useful for connective tissues around the follicle. It's not magic, but it's supportive. Vitamin D repletion isn't low. Selenium if you lack seafood. Biotin gets a lot of hype, but true deficiency is uncommon if you eat eggs and meat. But a modest dose during a shed is reasonable for some. Don't shotgun the supplement out. Measure, then move. Here's a mid-row check-in. If this is helpful, tap like so the algorithm shows this to someone who's panicking in the shower. And if you haven't yet, subscribe for more root cause, no-nonsense guidance from a doctor who wants you metabolically free. Action plan you can start today. Number one, track protein for a week and make sure you're actually hitting your target. Number two, add variety within your low-carb plate. Beef, lamb, salmon, or sardines, eggs if tolerated, and some shellfish. Number three, if weight is falling fast or you feel depleted, bump calories slightly and stabilize. Number four, salt to taste and consider electrolytes if you're lightheaded or cramping. Five, prioritize sleep. Same bedtime, dark cool room, short wind down routine. Six, if shedding is significant or prolonged, ask your clinician for the lab panel I mentioned. We'll list it for you in the description. Perspective matters. Short-term shedding can feel scary, especially if you've battled health issues for years. But if you know that week 6 to 12 might bring more hair in a brush, you won't interpret it as failure. You'll interpret it as biology being biology under stress. You steady your plan and allow recovery. Most importantly, you don't quit the strategy that's lowering insulin, improving blood pressure, calming your gut, and giving you your life back. If you're already in the shed, breathe, stabilize nutrition, shore up sleep and electrolytes, correct any deficiencies, and give it time. If you're just starting, set yourself up for success. Enough protein, a gentle calorie deficit, micronutrient awareness, and the patience to let your follicles catch up with your metabolism. As a physician, my job isn't just to treat problems, it's to help you anticipate them. I want you prepared for the speed bump so you don't abandon the road. Temporary hair shedding is a speed bump. The destination, metabolic health, energy, mental clarity, fewer meds. So it's worth it. 
And yes, for many of you, hair quality improves once the internal chaos comes. I've put a simple checklist in the description. The lab panel, a hair smart, low carb food list, and an electrolyte guide for low carbon carnivore. Use it. Share this with a friend who needs a calm voice and a plan. Your body isn't sabotaging you. It's triaging for survival. Give it the signals that say we're safe. We have what we need it will return to growth. You're not alone, you're not broken, and your story isn't finished. Stay the course, take care of the basics, and let your biology do what it was designed to do. Heal. I'll see you in the next video.